Welcome to church. It's so, so good to see you. It's church online. It's exciting. It's 11.30. It's all happening. My name's Tando. It's Vision Sunday Part 2. You're here. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are, why don't you comment in the chat function below? Because we'd love for this not just, just to be something that you watch and consume, but something that we create community and we get to interact together. I mean, honestly, I absolutely love knowing who's watching and where you're watching from. So why don't you comment below? We've got a great service coming up. As mentioned, it's Vision Sunday, part two. Al's going to be speaking, but right now the band are going to lead us in some songs. So stay tuned. Let's worship together. Creation cries, God. 
Well, Lord, we praise you like the song that we've just sang. We say you're worthy to be praised, Father. And I pray that wherever we're watching from right now, that we will shift our attention from maybe the things that have been going off in our worlds and uh, maybe how our week's been or maybe even a stress that we're experiencing right now, Lord, and we would shift it onto your goodness, your kindness, your strength, your majesty, Lord. We, we praise you today. And Father, we bring you all of our needs, our burdens, our cares. We cast them onto you because you care for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God is so, so good. And hey, there's so many great things coming up in the life of our church here at St. For more information about that, stay tuned. Here's Saint News. Hey, and welcome to this week's Saint News. This term's Alpha starts on Wednesday, the 6th of October, in person and online across all of our locations. Alpha's a totally free set of sessions that explore the basis of the Christian faith. And each evening is gonna look at a different question and it's designed to create conversation in an open, honest and friendly environment. There's gonna be great food, drink and a chance to meet some new people this autumn. Just go to saint.church forward slash alpha and sign up, invite your friends, your family and everyone you know to be a part of that in the coming weeks. Here's a little video to help you find out a bit more. No matter who you are, whatever, you know, no matter what walk of life you, you, you've lived, you all have massive questions. And I feel like Alpha is the place to start. Hey, now next weekend, we have a brand new service launching at our West Ham location that's going to be led by our amazing pastors, Cy and Chloe Nichols. And you are invited. This new 430 service is for everyone, and we're saving you a seat. It's gonna have Hey Baby and Kids Cruise around. There'll be great coffee and community worship teaching. And we're so excited, really, for what God's gonna do in West Ham and across Newham in the months and years to come. And we can't wait for you to get involved. If you're interested in coming along or becoming part of that new service, we'd love for you to email us at hello at saint.church and we can connect you in with the team. Also, starting this week is a brand new lunchtime service launching at our Shoreditch location called Work Life. It's beginning this Wednesday, the 29th of September at 1 p.m. It's gonna be led by John Palmiter and Toby Thomas. And the vision is to gather those with a heart for their workplace to be equipped to follow Jesus right where you are. And so if you're interested in getting involved, we'd love for you to visit our website, saint.church forward slash Shoreditch. And finally, groups are back this Tuesday, the 28th of September. And they're gonna be meeting uh, in person across the city and online. And we'd love for you to get involved with whichever saint location that you attend. Here's a little look at what's to come. Groups come in a variety of shapes and sizes and are led by incredible group leaders from all of our locations. So if you're not yet in a group or are simply new to Saint, I am personally inviting you to get connected and head over to saint.church forward slash groups to sign up to one near you. That's it for this week's Saint News. See you next week. Amazing. As you can see, so many great things kicking off this autumn here at St. Church. So if you've got any questions, head to our website, saint.church, and that will be the place where you can get signed up for the thing that you'd like to find out more information on. In a few moments' time, we're going to join our Hackney location in person for the message from out. So stay tuned. I'm excited today. Vision part two. Check this out.
Hey, and uh, a particular welcome to those of you watching online. Could we just um, make some noise in the room for those uh, on the... Uh, on the... <laughs> we love you. I don't know if you can see everybody, but um, we miss you. We hope you're all right. I know some of you couldn't get to church today because of the marathon, the half marathon. In fact, um, there's someone here who's run a half marathon. I'm not going to embarrass him. But, well, I'm going to embarrass him, but Kwasi, why don't you stand? He's run a half marathon and come straight from the race to church. So good. And a particular welcome. If you're visiting here for the first time, uh, we're really excited you're here. And for those of you watching online, we hope you feel right at home and connected wherever you are catching up or watching this live. Today is a special day in the life of our community. We do this twice a year, and twice a year we have a vision series, a gift day, an opportunity to give into the work um, of what's going on here. And so if you're visiting today or visiting online, uh, you are so welcome. But understand this is like a family meeting. We do this twice a year. And at this point in the year, we kind of look at what God is calling us to do, where God's calling us to go, and what the vision is. And we have a chance to respond. A little bit later on, you'll find a a form on your seat, um, our gift day form. And we're all going to have a chance to respond together um, as God leads us. And a reminder of the need, in case you weren't here last week, um, if you weren't here last week, and again online, you can go back and you can watch last week's part one of our vision series. It won't make as much sense unless you saw the kind of previous episode of where we're at. Um, But the the reminder of the need, we're praying that God, this this gift day, will provide £126,000. That's the difference between our projected uh, income and our projected expenditure as a community over the next six months. And I want to encourage all of us who attend Saint to be part of this response today. You may be here um, or online, but wh- wh- I want you to think of today as an opportunity to, uh, we're not going to do this for another six months. This is the moment to respond. And if you're a visitor today, again, I don't want to deprive you from the opportunity to be involved. Think of this as the normal offering. We take up at every service an offering. Think of this as a chance to contribute to the offering. And uh, let's, um, let's pray as we begin uh, and invite the Lord into what we're doing. Uh, the Lord is already here. He's doing wonderful things today. But let's encourage him to speak to each one of us in this place. So, Father, we invite you to speak to us. We thank you that you are the Father of light, that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And we pray out of the overflow of what you've given us that we would be generous and support what you're doing. And help speak to us, Lord, about what you're calling us to do, how each of us can play our part. In Jesus' name, amen. So in case you missed last week, I want to remind you that um, we don't do business as usual in the kingdom of God. That's not the mission that Jesus is like, hey, you're going to do maintenance until you die, and then you go to heaven. We are called to be part of an adventure that is the kingdom of God. And that's our, our job as the church, is to follow what the Holy Spirit is doing and join in with him. And so have a little look at the story so far, a little sign of what God's been doing over the last um, season as a church community. Have a look at the story so far. Let me tell you a story about hope. For over a thousand years, people have gathered in ancient churches across East London. Since the beginning, dangerous prayers a people following Jesus, called to bring hope, to play their part. What's the vision? The vision is hope, hope for the people of East London. That's why we're here, to bring hope in each generation. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is a renaissance. Lives restored, churches revitalized, culture renewed, God making all things new, breathing on the dry bones, bringing the ancient ruins to life again, that every church would become a cathedral of creativity. We went back to our roots, brewing beer, keeping bees, making the city into a garden again. And things began to grow. When the pandemic hit, everything changed except our mission, hope. More urgent than ever before. So we opened our lives, our hearts like never before. In one year, we went from feeding 5,000 meals to feeding 300,000 meals. 
We've learned to take church to new people in new places. We've learned that the church is a place where we can hold together, even in the storms of life. In-person religious services were banned under COVID rules. Online services have been a revelation and are here to stay. We've seen amazing stories of people's lives being transformed by Jesus on Alpha. And we've learned that we're in this together. It's quite amazing. It's an amazing feeling. I just knew that this had to be truth, and I just had this overwhelming sense of, like, happiness and, like, everything was being lifted off me. Everyone welcome, coming as they are, playing their part. Youth, students, groups, school of life, seniors, we've grown together. Something happens when we come together in unity. We're stronger together than we are apart. Where there is unity, amazing things can happen. So we're working together to bring hope to our neighborhoods. One church, many parishes. One team, one dream. All with one vision, to bring hope. Now we're over a thousand people meeting across six locations. New services being launched. Life returning to old places. And we're in this together. Every one of us playing our part in this adventure of hope. That's the story so far, and it's only just beginning. Good things coming in Jesus' name. Amen. So encouraging seeing what God's doing. I want to speak to you today about the generosity revolution. Today's talk is entitled The Generosity Revolution. In my life, generosity has not been the default setting. You know when you open your computer or you get your phone and it has default settings. Generosity is not, for me, a default setting. Let me tell you a little bit of my story. I come from what's called a broken home. When I was six years old, my parents separated. My mum left my dad and we moved into a tiny one-bedroom flat. My mum had no money, no job, and when I'd stay with her, I would put up my bed each night. She had one bedroom and so I put a camp bed up next to her bed and I put it away again in the morning. And I've known times in my life where money has been really tight. And if I'm honest, in those days, generosity in my life wasn't like the default setting. I was an only child, and my wife teases me, you know, it's like, when I'm like, I, it's not very good at sharing stuff, naturally, because I've grown up with this, like, I've got to pack my life in a suitcase, and that's my Lego, and uh, you don't get to touch that. And then I've known times in my life where I've been blessed with resources and money. I remember my first paycheck. Do you remember your first paycheck? It's like, wow, no one's ever going to tell me what to do again with my mummy, my, my money, mummy. Like, literally, I was like walking into my parents going, I've got money now. And they were like, well, it's not going to go very far because let me talk to you about the household bills. And like, okay, I get it now. But my first paycheck came through and I was like, wow, I have money. I felt like a lottery winner. I was like, nobody is going to touch this money. It's mine, my precious. And it's like I hadn't moved the default setting in my life from like not being generous to being generous. I needed a generosity revolution to take place in my life. And so I wasn't particularly generous when I didn't have anything. I wasn't particularly generous when I did get resources into my bank account or into my hands. And then I started going to church. I wasn't raised a Christian. I became a Christian when I was 18 years old. I walked into a church a bit like this. And one Sunday, they were like talking about money. And I was like, oh no! Of all the Sundays to come to church, I came on the one where they're going to talk about the money. And I thought, do they talk about the money every week? And no, they don't. They do it like twice a year like we do. But it happened that that Sunday they were talking about the needs of the community. And I guess I had two reactions when I heard the guy at the front talk about money. First, it's like, that my money is none of God's business. What are the church doing talking about my money? After all, I wasn't spending my money on firearms or drugs or anything illegal. So the church should be lucky uh, if I've got anything left over at the end of the month that I put in the uh, offering bucket. If it passes me by in a row, I can maybe find some change somewhere. The second reservation I guess I had was the British part of me. 
which, if I'm honest, we don't really like talking about money, do we? I mean, the first conversation you go around your friend's house for dinner is like, how are you? And how's your bank account doing this month? It's like one of the things we don't like talking about. But I hope this doesn't come to you as a shock, but Jesus, who of course was not British, spent a huge amount of time talking about money. In fact, 16 of 38 of Jesus' parables, when he teaches, are about money and possessions. There are 500 verses in the Bible about faith, without which it's impossible to please God. 500 verses about prayer, without which you can't have a relationship with God. Do you know how many there are about money in the Bible? 2,300. So a revolutionary thought began to come into my head, began to drop into my heart. If God is interested in my money, why wouldn't his teaching around money be every bit as life-transforming, as liberating, and as compelling as his teaching on every other area of life? So gradually, my heart began to get softened, and I started to give regularly. And I've got to tell you, it's one of the most important decisions that I have made as a Christian over the past 25 years. 25 years I've been a Christian, and in those 25 years, I've watched how when I've been obedient to God and been generous, how I have actually benefited, weirdly. When we're generous, the change happens actually in us, even more than those that we bless around us. That's not to say that when you write a check and you give money away, that God is going to give you 10 times that straight away. We don't preach a prosperity gospel. Quite the opposite. In fact, what we're saying is when you give, something transformative happens in our hearts that means we experience a revolution of generosity that changes us. And that, my friends, is my desire for each one of us as a church, that we would learn to experience the freedom that comes with radical generosity. And I've learned over the years that you can't outgive God. Proverbs 11, 24 in the message says this, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Every one of us can learn to play our part in a generosity revolution. And I love this church community because I'm constantly challenged by you that as we're called to follow this vision to bring hope to the people of East London, that God is stretching us all the time in our generosity. In fact, a, a few um, uh, months ago, the last, last couple of gift days ago, sorry, um, I was talking a, a about the finances and the need of the church, and somebody came up to me at the end of the service, and they said to me, Pastor, listen, we've got a huge vision. I'm a member of the congregation, she said. The vision is absolutely right. God has called us to bring hope to the people of East London. Please don't settle for dreaming small when it comes to providing for that vision. And they really challenged me. They said, you should be asking the congregation to support this in a much more um, dynamic and revolutionary way. So being a pastor, whenever anyone comes to me and says, hey, I've got this idea, you should do this, I'm like, great, you do it. My job's not to do it, you do it. So I persuaded them to record a video, and here they are. Would you welcome, by video, Tolu, who's going to come and encourage us this morning. Would you put your hands together for Tolu? I'm Tolu. I have been in the UK now for over 12 years. I'm Nigerian. I have been part of the church for over a year and I serve on the kids' crew. Monday to Friday, I work in the financial services sector and I'm a change manager. What inspires me to give is just the privilege it is to be invited by God to partner with what he's doing here on earth. Well, my first um, understanding or memory of giving will be my mom. Um, She's been gone about 20 years now, but she is my role model for radical generosity. We didn't have much growing up, but she just gave and gave. So I kind of grew up just knowing about giving and it was just normal. So it was a it was a very head first thing for me. It was just this is what you do. The the Bible commands it, so you do it. And if you love God, so you obey. And as that went on, then I got intrigued with the wisdom of giving. Um, side by side. And then the more you fall in love with Jesus Christ, your heart just opens up and you just realize if the God of heaven wants my resources, he can have it. The vision at Saint 
is particularly appealing to me because it's outward facing. It starts with the community and we're saying that we are bringing the church to the community. Yeah, and that's great. It's part of your worship and it's a brilliant opportunity to just make a difference in the community. Let, yeah, let's, let's give it up for Tolu. Thank you so much. I want you to turn with me. If you have a Bible, if you're watching online, it will come up on the screen and it'll come up on the wall behind me if you haven't got a Bible on your phone or whatever. But we're going to look at a passage in 2 Corinthians uh, verse, uh, chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through to um, 8. Yeah. So let's read this together. Paul writes this to an incredibly generous community which God is moving in doing extraordinary things. And Paul writes this, there is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people. For I know your eagerness to help. I've been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you and Acacia were ready to give and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I'm sending the brothers in order that our boasting to you about you in this matter should not prove hollow and that you may be ready as I said you'd be. For if any Macedonians come to me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you promised. Then it would be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided to give in your heart, what decided to, in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. In Jesus' name, amen. What a prayer for the church, that we would abound in every good work. Three steps today to a generosity revolution in our lives. Three steps to a generosity revolution. Number one, start regularly. Start to give regularly. Like the Corinthians in verse two, Paul writes, you are ready to give, enthusiastic. Paul writes, I know your eagerness to help. It's amazing, the Corinthians intended to give. They were like, yeah, you know, I love the vision of the church in Corinth for the people of Corinth, let's go, it's so exciting. And they were like, yeah, we really want to get involved in this and make a difference and feed 500,000 meals to the homeless and get out there and make a difference in our schools and our young people, our communities. The intention was there, but the thing is this, intention is not the same as action. So Paul continues in verse five, he says, finish the arrangements for the generous gift that you've promised. Maybe you're uh, new to church. Maybe you started attending Saint during lockdown or even online and you're here um, and you're watching wherever you're watching. I want to encourage you, don't miss this opportunity to move from intention to action. We don't do this every week. This is a big moment for us as a church community. And you can start today. Or you may be tempted to say, well, you know, I'll wait until you know, I've got this sorted in my life, or when I've got this big break in my work or that promotion at work. Uh, maybe there's somebody next to me looking down the road thinking, I'm sure there's somebody down here who could help start, step up and start giving. But the truth is, every one of us is called to give as God calls us in our hearts. It's between you and God. God isn't delegating to somebody else the privilege of you being able to be involved in his work. And you may say, well, I'm a freelancer and I don't know when the money's going to come in. But the truth is, we, we all have bills we pay regularly, right? You know, we have a phone contract quite often. It's like, well, I've got a phone and I pay that regularly. And maybe the same is true in your life. Well, can I encourage you to, to make it a discipline, a habit of a disciple that you would make space to regularly invest in giving to the work of the Lord? Because the, the thing is this, the reason I care about this is not about money. Because God has all the money. The, the, the Proverbs says the Lord has the cattle on a thousand hills. In other words, God doesn't need our money. The point is when we start to give regularly, it moves us from being a consumer to being a contributor. 
And the truth is uh, that as the church grows, that gap that each year we bring and say, look, we're growing, there's needs. It's not a huge gap. It only takes just over 100 of us to start regularly giving today, and we'd close that gap. And that would mean we're able to do all that we're called to do as a church community. You may say, well, look, the sum's 126,000 pounds. It's such a big amount of money. There's no way that my contribution could make a difference. But it can. Again, it's not about the money. The widow's might, the smallest coin in the Jewish purse, was far more valuable to Jesus than the guy who made a show at the front of giving. The point is this, be obedient to God. It's not about the money, it's about your relationship with him. You know, the average monthly gift given here is about 130 pounds. The smallest monthly gift is just five pounds. I'd love to encourage you, even if you're here and you're studying or you're unemployed, start making a priority of finding one way to give, maybe one pound, because it'll change your relationship with the church. It'll change the way you carry yourself with our community. It's a, it's a sort of a heart condition thing. The point is, it's just start, and you'll find it revolutionizes your experience of being in this family. You'll move from being a spectator to being a stakeholder, from being a passenger to being a participator. Another thing that Liv and I try and do is we prioritize giving here, giving to saint. There are loads of great causes that we're involved in. We're involved in lots of different charities. We support other charities outside of this community. But the truth is, only us in this community, those of you watching online, are part of Saint. We're the only ones who actually care about this community. We're the ones who are called by God to support it. So can I encourage you to think about making this the primary place of your giving? So the first step to a generosity revolution is to start giving regularly. And see what happens in your relationship with God. The second step is to stretch generously. Paul continues in verse 6. Then it will be ready as a gift generously given. As a generous gift. Not as one grudgingly given. Over the years, we found when we're trying to figure out where to begin thinking about our giving, that tithing is a helpful biblical principle. Tithing. What's tithing? In the Old Testament, the people of God would set apart as a rule of thumb... 10% of their income to invest and to give into the work of God. That's why in this country we have tithe barns still in the rural communities because for thousands of years people have set aside a portion of their income to invest in the work of God. And that's a helpful guideline. But the good news is we are not held by law. As people under grace, we are in fact, freed from the law, but not so that we're kind of let off the hook from the law. Jesus didn't come to negate the law. He came to free us from the law so that we might be free to exceed the law. In other words, it's not a case of sitting down and saying to God, well, you can have this much of my life, like like God is some agent, like he'll take 10% of your life. It doesn't work like that. In fact, it's the other way around. It's a question of saying, Lord, everything I have is yours, What are you calling me to do with the resources I have? I love what Tim Keller says. He says this, when you sit down and work out your giving, don't do it with a calculator. Do it with a cross. In other words, think about this. I stole my wife's calculator. Uh, When you've got a calculator, think, well, I'm going to give. It's gift day. I'm going to sign up to give. You know, well, well, let's work out what comes into my account each month. Let's work it out. And then I've got to take off the bills and my phone, and then I'm going to, and you, how much can I, get? and you're left with that, how much can you get away with, and like what's left. The point is, don't, don't give with a calculator. Instead, what Tim Keller is saying is, is, is give with a cross. When you sit down to work out your giving, say, Lord, in view of your mercy, in view that you gave your son as a sacrifice instead of me, In view that when I gave my life to you, I died and I was resurrected in faith with you, that I belong to Jesus. Everything I have is yours. That's the place to start. That God so loved us that he gave. And from that place, we can work out what we're to give in response. So I want to encourage you with that because I want us to be a community of outrageous generosity. Not of law, but of grace. So, let me encourage you to think about that. 
And as a consequence, the early church didn't stop giving when they came to Christ. They didn't negate the law. In fact, they exceeded the law. They gave as much as they could. They competed. That's what's happening in this passage. They're competing with one another to be the most generous church. I love that. So they're stretching themselves all the time. I wonder if you work out or if you go to a gym. I'm sure that um, those of you who've been running the half marathon will know that you can't just turn up and, 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 and run without stretching. Stretching is a part of, of growth. In the same way, if you go to the gym and you do the same exercise every time, you'll find that over time your body adjusts to it and it doesn't grow anymore. You're not growing. So what they say, and I'm, I'm not speaking from huge experience here, but what they say is if you want to get fitter, you've got to try stretching yourself and doing new things. In the same way, let me encourage you to think of your generosity as a muscle. Stretching and generosity is, is a little bit like the, a gym for our hearts. If we don't stretch, what happens is we're just doing maintenance, and that's not what God calls us to do. Generosity is something that has to be practiced if we're going to experience radical generosity. In fact, studies have found that people who are generous tend to have better health. A Time magazine study found that people spending money on others, giving their money away, was as effective as lowering blood pressure as medication or exercise. Being generous can help you live longer and reduce stress, and that's got to be good for the heart, right? In the same way, when we learn to give ourselves away, we stretch our hearts and we experience more of the goodness of God. Here's what Liv and I try and do. We had this conversation this morning. We were like, we want to stretch this gift day. And so we had a conversation about, we just try and add, a, we give regularly and we give like a one-off gift last week as part of Vision Day, but we'd love to try and stretch our regular giving. Because the truth is, inflation is already stretching your giving. If you give regularly, it's already being stretched, but down. You know, inflation will be robbing you. I don't know what inflation is right now. I'm not an economist, but every year your giving will be decreasing if you keep the same. So let me encourage you to consider today stretching and seeing what happens. And then the third way to release a generosity revolution in your life is to sow joyfully. And I've got to say, this is my favorite thing about gift day. We don't do fundraising as a church. We don't do gift day like, oh, you know, the lights are going to go off in 36 days unless we all give and we're locking the doors until you sign up to give. I don't mind if you give one pound or 126,000 pounds. The mum numbers don't matter. The point is, when we give, we want to give out of a sense of celebration. We're not under compulsion to give. No one has to give. We can all go home. It's fine. God's not going to be cross with you if you don't give. Instead, he wants you to be generous because when we're generous, we experience a revolution of joy. That's what Paul is talking about in this passage. When we sow joyfully. Listen, Paul says this. Remember this in verse 6. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. Then Paul continues, each of you should give what you've decided to give in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. In other words, no one is forcing you to give. Then Paul continues, for God loves a cheerful giver. The word in the Greek, as you may know, is the word hilarion, from which we get the word hilarious. In other words, when you give, make sure it's a party, a carnival, not a funeral. Because we want to give out of a place of joy. And you know, I love gift day. The first time we did a gift day, I was utterly terrified. I was like, oh my goodness, there's no way God is going to provide the needs of the community. And I, I literally stood up here, and it was a few years ago now, and I, I was literally shaking. You wouldn't know, um, but I was literally shaking because I, I, I'm so terrified of talking about the money with the community. But it's my job as the pastor to lay out the needs of the community, and then we're going to celebrate and when we take up our offering a moment, I've asked Kaz and the team to lead us in songs of celebration, not of like, oh, it's going to be a nightmare. We're going to have a quick, let's make sure we can get around the buckets as quick as we can. No, we want to celebrate because it's fun. I love hearing the stories of what God does each gift day. I have the privilege of hearing. One of the things I love about my job is I get to hear what God is doing in our community. And often online, we get emails from people saying, it's amazing, I'm so grateful for what God is doing in this place, in this community. And a great way to do that is to think about, even if you're already giving, to think about each gift day to give a one-off gift 
towards the, the work that we're called to do. Maybe you, you're here and you're thinking, well, I, I, I'm a visitor. Can I encourage you to give one pound towards what we're doing? Because it'll change the way that you respond in this moment to what God's already doing. The point is this, if we sow in joy, we also reap in joy. That's what the Bible promises. I love a story from one young person in our congregation who gave a one-off gift on gift day last year towards the reopening of this building. Remember a year ago, we were like, like, it was just like we were starting up again in 2020, we were getting going, and in the start of 2020, we had a gift day like we're doing today, and they gave a one-off gift. They were already very generous, they contributed to the life of the church, but they gave a one-off gift, and they wrote me this email. She said this, I joined the church back in January last year and attended the Sunday when you preached about people buying a chair. Do you remember we had that Sunday where we were like, let's buy a chair, and we were like, I can't remember how much the chairs were. They were like, like, we were like, oh my goodness, could you buy a row? Could we buy? I think Liv and I gave towards a chair. It was a couple hundred pounds. We we're like, this is crazy, but we're going to go for it. And this person bought a chair in faith. She said, I was new to St. John Hatton and hadn't given to the building project so far. So I thought it'd be a great thing to help contribute to and a way to show, show my support and my response to this new church community. Then you asked if we might think about someone we knew if we'd buy them a chair. My flatmate and my best friend immediately came to mind with no expectations, but just the hope that one day she may join me at church, I bought one for me and one for her and lifted her journey up to God. Well, during the lockdown, I love this, during the lockdown, she signed up to do Alpha through the church. And every Wednesday, we joined our group together. This led to many questions and great discussions about faith. Fast forward to the reopening of St. John of Hackney. And the person I had sitting next to me in our chairs was that best friend. Isn't that amazing? She finishes this. She says, God is good and his timing is perfect. That person has gone on to join the team. Saint, she volunteers and gives. It's amazing seeing the chain reaction that a revolution of generosity can have through your life. When we sow joyfully, extraordinary things can happen. And I believe today God wants to kickstart a revolution of generosity in this place that will have an impact not just on our hearts, but on the lives of those people around us. In a moment, we're going to have a chance to pray and respond and move from intention to action. And we do these gift days every six months, and the next one won't be until 2022. So now's a moment, a bit like a bus arriving at a bus stop, to get on the bus. I'm praying God will speak to you about what he's calling you to do. I pray this will be a turning point in your life, that you'll experience freedom and joy of the generosity revolution. And I pray that as we start to give regularly, as we stretch generously, as we sow joyfully, that we, as the Bible says, will abound in every good work. Here's what Paul writes in verse 8. Here's the impact of the generosity revolution. Verse 8 of that passage, he says this, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. You want your life to have an impact? Start with a revolution in your generosity. God will be able to do so much for your life. I'm confident that today, just as I've been reading out stories from a year ago, that we're going to see from this day stories of impact from the perspective of eternity. That God will remind us of what we sow today, that we'll see a harvest of hope, that every good work for the people of East London, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Thanks for joining us online. We're going to hand back to the host in the studio right now. And then what we're going to do here in the room is I'd love to encourage you to grab the give cards and a pen, and you'll find them on the seats um, next to you. So if I grab one too, um, if you can grab one of these and uh, take it in your hand. Amazing. Thank you so much, Al, for that phenomenal message. And I just love the idea of moving from intention to action. And we have an opportunity to do that right now by taking up an offering, an opportunity for us to give. And like we've heard, this is in response to the generosity of God. And for me, I find it so helpful to think that 
as I give, I'm becoming more like Jesus. As I give, I become more like Jesus in that he is so generous and I get the opportunity to be generous as well. So in a few moments' time, the information will come up on the screens and all you need to do is head to our website, saint.church forward slash give. And when you do so, there'll be a page that will come up that will look a little bit like this. You'll see it come up on the screen in a few moments' time. So you head to this web page. As you go down the web page and you click, there'll be an opportunity for you to fill in your details. And if you'd like to set up a standing order so it just comes out uh, monthly uh, out of your account, then you can do that. You can just click that online location and it'll take you to the page where you can fill in your details. They will be, once you put your amount that you'd like to give and whether it's one-off or regular, it will then take you, um, it will give you a link to your email um, and that will be a unique code that no one else will have uh, just for you to make sure that it's a secure uh, payment method. So you can do that if you'd like to right now. I'll give us a few moments to do that. The website will be on the screen and then we'll be back to worship in a few moments time. We'll see you in a second. Amazing. I think everyone's had a chance to give if you would like to. And like we mentioned earlier, we're going to give with a sense of celebration. So let's celebrate together for what God has already done, what he's doing in our lives right now and what he's going to do in our lives and through our church in the days and the months and weeks ahead. Let's worship. your praise. Good, good God. Lord, the author of my days. Faithful one. Holy and exalted. Lifted high. Down through the ages. Be glorified. All creation shouts your praise. Good, good God. Lord, the author of my days. Faithful one. Holy and exalted. Down through the ages, we glorify. We bow down, we bow down before you. We bow down, we bow down before you. We give you all our praises. We bow down, yeah, we bow down before you. 
We bow down, we bow down before you because you're holy. We bow down, yeah. We bow down before you because you're worthy. We give you all our praises. We bow down, yeah. Hey. Father, we say we praise you today that you're worthy of our praise, our worship. You're worthy of our offering and our finance, Lord. We love you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us. And a special thank you uh, to the people that I saw in the chat for the first time today. I hope you're enjoyed the service and a huge huge welcome to you for us all if you want to stay connected please do head to the website saint.church forward slash join in or like keeping up to date on the website you can do that or you can head to our instagram page as well which is just saint.church across the board you can be able to find us we want to stay connected with you in the week but until next time we love you so much and we'll see you soon have a great rest of your week see you later